As of this writing, I've watched and rated roughly 680 matches from January to June of this year. My picks and rankings will be strictly confined to the cases built in the time period of January 1st to June 30th, 2023. Let's get into it. Event of the Year AEW Dynamite, February 1st, 2023 This is basically an ideal episode of Dynamite, one booked truly for the freaks. It's an episode whose peaks are so high that it overcomes anything else on the show. Those peaks happen to be three great matches, John Moxley vs. Hangman Page 3, which continues adding new and interesting wrinkles to the best rivalry of the first quarter of the year. Then there's Brian Danielson vs. Timothy Thatcher, which isn't all it could be but still delivers strong enough based on what one might expect from those two names. Finally, the main event is just an absolute barn burner of a Samoa Joe vs. Darby Allen match that succeeds in epitomizing one of the great genres of wrestling. Darby death. It actually doesn't even remotely matter what else is on this show because when there's three matches that good compressed into a two hour space on TV, it's just hard to consider or complain about anything else. Promotion of the year. CMLL. Watchability and consistency are far more important qualities to me when judging the promotion of the year than high peaks. At the very least, that's true for my present day lists as I'm able to see more from any given promotion than I would for any of my historical retrospectives. That's why even though we won't be seeing much of them at the higher reaches of the other lists in this video, the best promotion of the year is none other than Consejo Mundial de Lucha Libre. The oldest promotion in the world tapped into a sort of timeless quality this year, having weekly shows filled with exciting trios matches built around classic face heel dynamics that feel warm and comforting where so much other wrestling is just frustrating. The top of the card is anchored by this hot crop of talent that feel massive and exciting on every outing. Mysticos once again at the top of his game as this traditional ace figure, Soberano Jr. as the incredibly attractive hero that appeals primarily to the female fan base, Atlantis Jr. as this up and coming talent, and a whole host of fun baddies in the likes of Los Infernales or Los Guerreros Laguneros. It's a winning formula, well structured trios wrestling, and a hot crowd, it just doesn't fail. Real wrestling lives in Arena Mexico this year. Tag Team of the Year, Astronauts. It's almost easy for me to take the astronauts for granted for a bunch of reasons. Because of how I consume wrestling and how BJW releases their shows, I'm never feeling like I'm seeing the astronauts in real time. I always seem to be catching up to their work, and it is always excellent. Such is the benefit then of keeping a spreadsheet that I can look back on in retrospect and really consider that, holy shit, the astronauts have been having a great year. It's boosted by revisiting their feud with strong BJ, but there's just a multitude of tags and six-mans scattered through the year that just epitomize the high level of quality they bring to basically every single match of theirs. They're a pair that simply do not miss. Match of the Year in Chronological Order Anthony Henry vs. Adam Priest, Action Wrestling, January 20th, 2023 A great way to wrap up one of the best rivalries from 2022. 
To ring in the new year, Adam Priest and Anthony Henry take the ropes off the ring and fight it out one last time and it's a delight. The best of any of the matches in their series, this has some scrappy brawling, truly exhilarating weapon use, and a big, big finish that feels just right as a way to put an end to such a violent feud. Roll Tide, baby! John Moxley vs. Hangman Page, AEW, February 1st, 2023, and March 5th, 2023. Lumping these two together since they're consecutive entries in the list anyways, as far as I'm concerned, perhaps the most interesting and exciting match series at the half-year point. The February 1st match is a clever little morality tale about quitting while you're ahead. Hangman Page can beat Jon Moxley, but when he gets bogged down in his own spite, it leaves him vulnerable to be rolled up. Meanwhile, the Revolution Texas Deathmatch is just a fucking barn burner, man. When these two decide to go big, boy do they pull it off. The barbed wire that Hangman's hair gets caught on, the bricks that Mox uses to stomp Hangman's hand, and that beautiful chain that makes Hangman's nickname a gruesome reality. Delightful mayhem and brutality in this, a hard one to top as far as wrestling this year goes. Claudio Castagnoli vs. Eddie Kingston, Ring of Honor, March 31st, 2023. I don't think it's any secret that I'm a big fan of the rivalry these two had in Chikara back in the late 2000s and early 2010s. No surprise then that when those old wounds and hurts came back to the fore, Claudio Castagnoli and Eddie Kingston delivered on the promise of those old hatreds. There's a strong argument to be made that this might be the best match these two have ever had together. Hard-hitting, spiteful, and filled with some truly grotesque bumping, this is a championship clash that has not been matched by anyone else anywhere in the world this year. I've spent so much time on this channel extolling the best qualities of Eddie Kingston, but Claudio Castagnoli is stunning in this. Brutal, calculating, and believable in what might be be his best in-ring performance since leaving the indies all those years ago. An astonishing accomplishment all round here. Kazusada Higuchi vs. Yuki Oeno, DDT, May 21st, 2023. After losing the KOD Championship in January, DDT once again lowered Higuchi's profile by confining him to uninteresting tags and six-mans through much of the half-year. Luckily, Higuchi yet again was unleashed in full force at the annual King of DDT tournament, and his match against Yuki Oeno in the semifinals might be my favorite of his all year. This recaptures that heated spark that's felt like it's been missing from Ueno all year as he tries to overcome the force that is Higuchi. As for the big man himself, he plays his role perfectly as this nigh-unstoppable being. Where he really excels is in putting over the possibilities for vulnerability though, like selling his arm as Ueno tries to pick at it. It's not something that pays off for Ueno in this match, but will become far more important later on in the finals match against Chris Brooks. Probably my favorite DDT match of the whole year. Input over Output I'm experimenting with a new category this year that better highlights some of my favorite performers of the year. Just to explain, when I'm putting together my Wrestler of the Year list, I'm typically looking for a good balance between a wrestler's input, which refers to the level and quality of their individual performances, and their output, which would typically refer to the overall quality of each match as a whole. The people who make my Wrestler of the Year lists put in great performances in many great matches. But sometimes the people putting in my favorite performances for one reason or another, don't always produce great matches. This is the place where we honor them. V 
virus. Virus has been one of the highlights of CMLL, primarily from being the most reliable worker of lightning matches this year. Every time he works a lightning match, be it against a legend like Blue Panther or against a younger star like Capitan Suicida, it's always an enjoyable 10-minute bite of cool mat work and big dives. His trio's work with Los Cancerberos is also excellent, always laid out just a little bit different from the more standard trio's work around it. I wish he got more opportunities against the better names in the company, but that's what lands him on this list instead of the Wrestler of the Year one. Orange Cassidy I think a lot of people have been pointing out how wonderful Orange Cassidy's performances during his international championship reign have been, so it should be no shock that he's here. The thing is that as good as Cassidy has been, I actually haven't loved too many of the title matches outside of the defense against Daniel Garcia. I've always loved Cassidy's own performances though, especially as he accrues injuries that carry over into each new defense. I would love to see more from the Garcia feud, but otherwise, Cassidy feels like he's succeeding in spite of his competition. Athena Watching Athena on her own in each match, it's hard not to consider her to be one of the best professional wrestlers on the planet. Domineering on offense, a big bumper on the cell, she fucking rocks. She had one of the best women's matches of the year against Willow Nightingale, but outside of that, 90% of her time has been spent working squash matches, which, fun as they are, just have a big uphill climb before I can call them great. The Kira Hogan match was almost great but not quite there, but still a nice addition to her resume, especially with something a little more weapons-driven. I think depending on how the rematches with Willow or other title defenses go, Athena might still crack the proper Wrestler of the Year list, but for now, we honor her here. Wrestler of the Year Number 5. Astronauts I talked about these two already in Tag Team of the Year, so I'll keep this short. Astronauts have been impressing in both 2 vs. 2 and Trios matches all year long, and they don't seem ready to stop anytime soon. If I had to distinguish these two individually, I'd say that Abe's probably having a more fun and interesting year, and even in their tags, he catches the eye a bit more. But all their best work this year has been together as a tag team, so I don't really care to separate them at this particular time. Astronauts hit hard, and they're great. Number 4. Hangman Page I would go as far as to say that throughout the entirety of the 2020s, Hangman Page has consistently been the most reliable performer in the Elite. And this year, he finally has a clear path to regain a lot of the momentum that felt sapped away by the tail end of his world title reign. How does he do that? Well, he spent the year feuding with Jon Moxley and the Blackpool Combat Club, and that's just a formula for success in my book. That being said, Paige wouldn't be on this list, especially this high, if he was just having his hand held. The guy is a likable, babyface figure who hits hard and can have these really emotionally engrossing matches when given the right material. In 2023, it's pretty much been all the right material for Hangman Page. Number 3. John Moxley On the surface, it feels like John Moxley's having a more low-key year than the last. I think that's mostly because he's not having a crazy run of high-profile singles matches like last year, and to be perfectly honest, not too many people in the world have had that kind of run this year either. But when you really boil it down and look at the matches that Jon Moxley's having, he remains easily in the upper tier of professional wrestlers anywhere in the world. I've talked up the Hangman Page matches, but he's also just such a solid force in the BCC tags that have populated most of his year. 
His performance always anchors things. Just think of his fork stabbings in the Texas Deathmatch, as well as Anarchy in the Arena. Moxley in the 2020s is quickly entering the conversation to take a place among the all-timers, but for January to June of 2023, he's not quite at the top of the heap. Number 2. Kazusada Higuchi Once again, it's not a perfect half year for Higuchi. Really, it's a bit of a downer when he has to drop the title to Yuji Hino no matter how much I enjoyed that particular match, and it is great. For so much of the year, there's just not a lot for the guy to do, a problem exacerbated by not having Naomi Yoshimura as a regular tag partner anymore either. But King of DDT is always a great way to get his year firing up again. All his matches in the tournament were great, and even if he didn't win, he still came out of it returning to the top of the card due to Chris Brooks's unfortunate injury in the aftermath. May and June were excellent months for the big man, with him shining in both singles and tag settings pretty much the whole way through. There's time left for Higuchi to rise back up to the peak of both the DDT card and this list before the year is out though, but that remains to be seen. Number 1. Yuji Okabayashi Okabayashi likely doesn't hold on to this spot, and that's a not insignificant reason why I have him in this spot right now. For those that don't know, Yuji Okabayashi recently announced that as of June 30th, he's taking an indefinite break from professional wrestling. That's a real shame because at the rate he was going this year, he might just have been the wrestler of the year. Perhaps the most consistently entertaining wrestler in Japan of the mid-year as far as output goes, Big Huge got to shine as the strong heavyweight champion with great matches against the likes of Daimonji So and Yuya Aoki, as well as in tag settings, often fighting against the astronauts. His interactions and eventual singles match against Fuminari Abe are especially a highlight as far as I'm concerned. Those two just have a delightful energy together, real great chemistry. The series of farewell matches leading up to Okobayashi's break were really strong as well, between the strong BJ tag against Violent Giants to back-to-back outings against Yasufumi Nakanoe and Takuho Kato. It doesn't seem like Okobayashi is planning to add anything else to his case this year, so that leaves the door wide open for someone else to overtake. But for January to June, it didn't get much better than Yuji Okobayashi. Thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. Of course, I want to send out a massive thank you to Sam the VA mod who did a wonderful job putting the video together as always. He's amazing. Book him for your video editing needs. And of course, I want to send a huge thank you to all my supporters over on Kofi. Thank you to one-time supporters in the likes of Garrett Kidney, Ill, Thurman, Callum, Collie, Juan C. Gonzalez, Patrick McCaw, Puente, Bill, Andos, Bingo, Lance Garrison, Irwin, Genking, OG, Thrax, Killa, Matty Ice, Secret Cow 42, Batman, Squill, and Alex Fireheart. And of course, a huge thank you to all my monthly supporters in James Draper, Captain Jack Heartless, Eddie Roberts, Jacob Dickens, Chick Fritz, Spiders in My Bed, Timothy R. Buchner, in the lane, Don Nomadic, Peter Vinison, Kid King Pin, Joe Humphreys, Christopher Jackson, Saltine Dalton, Four Pillars of Hell, Sean Emily, Mason Rollison, Carve Cutta, Jacob VR, Craig Jones, Merch Table Mafia, Clem DK, Suitcoat Man, Ando Commando, Shane Vibe MD, Christoph, Quentin Besnahard, Christopher Richards, Dom G, Austin Shermer, Ben Rowe, Wrestling Playlists, Woo! Francois DeBuck, Justin Robert, Shane Longoria, 630 Centon, and Pro Wrestling Outsider. Uh, to be perfectly candid, you guys are just the absolute best. I know it's been so long since I've had a release on this channel, and your patience and continued support means the absolute world to me. I am so grateful. Thank you for helping me do something that means a whole lot to me. You guys rule. Thank you so much again for watching. Enjoy your day, night, wherever it is you are and have a good one.